I watched a video that was published yesterday by Neo Unplugged called Allow Men to Feel the Full Range of Emotions, and it referenced a couple of other videos such as MGTOW Messenger's emotional video, Daddy's Hiding in the Phone, and Dave Foley's divorce chronicled in the Joe Rogan experience. Links will be in the description. A question inevitably arises regarding how women can be so evil. It's clearly not about the children because these women will use them to extort money and deny children access to their father, thus psychologically damaging them in order to get more money from the man. But it doesn't seem to be about the money either because these women are more than happy to drive their ex-husbands to commit suicide rather than arrive at some kind of workable solution that would benefit both parties. These women have an evil streak best understood as that of vengeance, even when they themselves are the initiators of the divorce and the guy didn't do anything wrong. Why do women put so much effort into destroying these men if it was simply about money? Well, there is a reason, and it's not pretty. It will be necessary to expand upon the idea from my previous video, She'll Never Love You. In that video, I asserted that women don't and cannot love men, at least not in the way that men love women. I compare the love women have for men to that of the love for a car, or some other useful object. Once the object becomes less useful, they no longer love it. Such is the nature of love for an object. Now a few women have commented on my previous video and deny that I have them pegged, and a lot of this is due to the fact they don't know that men and women love differently. However, we can do a very short and simple experiment. So if you're watching this video, I want you to imagine the perfect woman, if you're a straight man of course. If you're a straight woman, imagine the perfect man. If you're gay, substitute accordingly. Anyway, I want you to imagine what makes them so perfect. What qualities spring to mind that make them the perfect man or woman? Now here's the curveball. I want you to think of three to five things about this perfect person that make them so perfect that has nothing to do with their physical appearance, money, or anything else superficial, temporary, or external. I want you to focus on their character, their personality, and what makes them a unique person. Okay, take a few seconds to gather your thoughts. Okay, so first, the gentleman. What were some of the qualities you listed as belonging to the perfect woman? I'll list a few of my own and you tell me if I'm on track. Was I on the right track? If you've come up with a list similar to these, perhaps using different words or in a different order, congratulations, you've listed what's known as the Aristotelian virtues. Okay ladies, have you come up with your list? No fair copying off the boys, but let me hazard a guess that your list is a bit more nuanced. How close was I ladies? Was I pretty spot on? Now the first thing you might notice is the predominance of the word me, but this is a little sloppy so let me clean this up a bit. Now that's a little better, but I think we can simplify it down even further. There we go. The list of qualities of the perfect man, not related to his appearance or money according to women. And hopefully a demonstration of why women don't love men. You can thumb my video down and call me names in the comments section, but if you're honest with yourself, you'll admit I'm right. So what does this have to do with why women become so evil during a divorce? Well, remember that a man's worth to a woman is almost entirely based on his money. As I explained in my video, TFM's Guide to Sexual Marketplace Values, women are valued for their youth, beauty, and virtue, while men are valued for their money. And that is the key to why women become so evil in a divorce. Of individuals who get married, 80.6% of women who get divorced do so under the age of 30. If the couple lasts past age 30, their likelihood for divorce drops significantly. Why is this? It's because a woman's sexual marketplace value is based on her youth and beauty, and she's very unlikely to attract a better man after 30 than she could in her 20s when her market value was at its peak. If she has children, she may even understand how undesirable single mothers are to quality men, and stick it out. However, sticking it out doesn't mean she has to like it. In fact, if your income drops because you lose your job or become sick or disabled, she will outright hate you. There is a common saying towards men by women who divorce in their 30s or older. And that is something along the lines of, I wasted the best years of my life on you, and they aren't kidding. 
women really only have one chance to leverage their youth and beauty and bag the richest man they can. Unlike a man that could conceivably go bankrupt and rebuild his wealth again and again over the course of his life, women cannot return to their 20s and try again. When a man's money dries up and the woman is older than 30, she will despise her husband, even if the monetary loss wasn't his fault. Indeed, even if it was the wife's spending and desire for a higher standard of living than her husband could afford that caused the bankruptcy, and it's entirely her fault, she will blame him anyway. The easiest way to understand this entitlement is to equate it to an object, in this case an investment. Imagine that you worked for decades to save money to buy an interest in a certain company. Despite your hard work, you have to use an irreplaceable family heirloom as collateral for a loan in order to buy the necessary stake in the company. You eventually do buy the stake and begin to reap the financial benefits for the next 10 to 20 years or so. You're living large and loving life and then suddenly the company goes bankrupt, taking your savings along with it along with the irreplaceable family heirloom. You can't go back in time and get your money back and now you've built a lifestyle for yourself that you can no longer afford and you're too old to work like you did previously, you're stuck and you're probably mad. I would imagine that all the good feelings you had for this company over the last decade or so have immediately gone right out the window. And now all you feel is disgust and hatred towards them for whatever decisions they may or may not have made that ruined your life, such as the nature of love for an object. Now imagine that you had the ability to sue the executives of this company in order to get back some of the portion of the money you've lost. Wouldn't you pursue any avenue to ruin these men's lives in order to hurt them the way they hurt you? And if you drove them to commit suicide, would you feel remorse? Or would you take smug satisfaction in it? I don't know what your answer is if you're a man, but I know what your answer is if you're a woman. This is why women destroy their ex-husband's lives and divorce without remorse. The woman's youth, beauty, and virtue are her irreplaceable heirloom. Once lost, it can never be recovered and she views the man she married as a bad investment. She made the wrong call, and like our investment example, she has the opportunity to exact revenge and ruin the man's life for not living up to her expectations. He wasted the quote-unquote best years of her life, so she's going to ruin the rest of his. It's revenge, and it's hurting the children most of all, but like I said before, that's the nature of love for an object.